Inez de la Quatera joins us now from Israel, along with our contributor and former senior CIA field operative, Daryl Blocker. Daryl, let's start with you. As a former CIA operative, you know how much Israel and the U.S. pride themselves on having some of the best security, uh, defense, and intel in the world. So how could this get past Israeli intelligence? Honestly, it's disappointing, but not very surprising. We knew about Pearl Harbor. Um, we knew that 9-11 was going to happen. We just didn't know where. And it doesn't surprise me that it's somewhere along the line, the Israelis had collected some aspects of this training, but not as uh, as laid out in the, in the Wall Street Journal. So um, missing it is not that difficult because you're inundated with so much information, so much information, and it was aspirational until it became inspirational. And it has been an inspirational to those elements of people who want to do nothing but eliminate Israel as a nation in this world. So a year ago, they have this battle plan in their hands. And so why would they dismiss that? Did they not take Hamas seriously? I would, I would be careful about them dismissing it. Um, Hamas has never been the full the full uh, focus of the Israeli uh, defense forces. There are more prevalent threats: Hezbollah, this Islamic Republic of Iran, the civil war in Syria. So they have they're in a tough neighborhood. Um, I'm certain that there were analysts who were dogged about pushing this to the top of the you know top of the food chain, but they did miss it. At the end of the day, it was more poor leadership than it was on the intelligence front but it was a all of government failure. So what role does US intelligence play now in, a, in the process, intelligence process going forward? Honestly, I'm disappointed if the Israelis did not share that report from a year ago with, with the Americans, with the CIA, with the FBI. There are tens of thousands of Americans and the general agreement between the CIA and its partners are that if your citizens are under some possible threat, we will let you know that that, that threat is, is, is prevalent and we'll keep you abreast of any changes in that uh, particular threat. So Inez, this all comes as the IDF has resumed operations in Gaza. Uh, the ceasefire is over. Uh, what does this continuation now in fighting mean for the humanitarian crisis in Gaza? And can aid get in? Yeah, Kira, I mean, that's the, the big question here. So we understand the latest we got from Egyptian officials was that so far today, no aid has been able to get into Gaza. So lots of concerns that that could foreshadow that that's going to be the pattern here going forward or, or that aid could be uh, severely limited here. Uh, we know that in recent days, as part of this uh, truce agreement, aid had been getting into Gaza. And I think most officials recognize it was still just a drop in the ocean in terms of what was needed. But the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, uh, did uh, talk about all of that yesterday and he said that the, the number of, of trucks that had been getting into Gaza had doubled uh, since the, the truce agreement was implemented. So, uh, it, it, you know, the, the fear is that we're going to revert back to what we saw in the early days of this with the IDF laying siege to Gaza, no, no water, no food, no electricity going into Gaza. And uh, we are, you know, winter is right around the corner. There are a number of, of experts warning about the risks that that poses. And so some, some, some big concerns there for civilians as the war resumes, uh, especially because because, you know, so many civilians are now concentrated in southern Gaza here. All right, Inez, Daryl, appreciate you both. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.